On this episode of Travelogue, we head out to Huai An, located in northern Jiangsu Province. Come along with us and marvel at the residence of the first Chinese premier of the People's Republic of China, Zhou Enlai. This city has churned out some of China's greatest men in history. Then, after all that food for thought, feast on sumptuous Huayang cuisine and get your hands ready for the hairy crab season. Welcome to Travelog. I'm Greta Georges. We've just landed in Huai An. This famous and historical city is the birthplace of Zhou Enlai, the first premier of the People's Republic of China. And getting here has never been easier. This recently opened airport is just a one and a half hour flight from Beijing and near 40 minutes from Shanghai. If anything, this points to more good things to come, and we're here to explore it. Kwai An spans over the ancient canal of Kwai River, and its name literally means Peace on the River Kwai. Located in northern Jiangsu Province, it borders Anhui Province to the southwest. With a population of 5 million today, Kwai An has churned out some of China's greatest men in history, including literary doyen Wu Chang'an, the author of the legendary Journey to the West. The city is also known for its fertile agricultural land and subtropical monsoon climate which carries abundant rainfall. So the best times to visit would be in spring and autumn to escape the rainy season. But it's also pouring with style in accommodation and this one caught our eye with its unique flavor. got some extra cash you might want to upgrade to a room that looks like this but you know I think it's the balcony that takes the box look at that view comes complete with your own lake Agrit Lake Villa here boasts a class of its own fusion is done to a T here east meets west architecture and man-made elegance merge with natural surroundings the best part about this? It's location, location, location. It's smack right next to the city for your convenience, so you can get the best of both worlds. Next, we're off to a ferry dock, an olden day spot that carries the charm of this city. Nan Chuan Bei Ma She Zhou Deng Lu. This literally means that in the south, their primary source of transportation are boats, and in the north, they're accustomed to riding on horsebacks. But when they come here to Huai'an, what they'll do is get off the boat and come on land right off on horses. That's because it's where the north and south converge and the exchange of transportation happens. Now I know that there's a ferry over there and they say that if you truly want to understand what Huai'an is all about, then that will be the best place to start. We're cruising along the Grand Canal right now and it's one of the largest man-made waterways in the world. And Huayan is located along this route from the south to the north. It's a Beijing-Hangzhou route. And basically they send goods, rice, grains all the way up to the north. And it really goes to show how Huayan is strategically located, geographically important and economically important as well. And this Grand Canal provides a link to its past. In its heydays, this 1,776 kilometers canal saw the boom in economy and salt trade during the 6th and 7th century, which extended till the early 1900s. This route flows 45 minutes directly to an old quaint town called Guzhen Hexia, which had a hand in the flourishing salt business. Salt merchants used to live over there. 
and they would use push carts to transport the goods along the pavement and up and down these steps to the rest of China through the Grand Canal. What's really interesting is that the constant wear and tear of the stone slab really goes to show how business have been booming and thriving through the times. So let's step back into the past and find out what other little secrets this village has in store for us. This place embodies the spirit of ancient China. Here, people's daily lives are a living picture of the past. This gem of a town, lying directly along the route of the Grand Canal, was shaped by its ebb and flow. Dying trades of good old-fashioned crafts and artisan products are tucked away inside these grey facades. Do allow yourself at least one full afternoon to explore and you might even stumble upon a little discovery yourself. The residents here are very friendly, so get into the neighborly spirit if they invite you in for a game of mahjong. Let's have a look and see what's across. Hi, Hi. 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 这店是在这边多久了八九十年了那我如果在这边捡的话一次多少钱呢五块钱五块钱你好 嗨,这是什么啊?茶伞。茶伞,它是用什么来做的?用面粉啊。用面粉。哇,那你就,就这样子用面粉来卷了。嗯,秋桃。那这个多少钱呢?五毛钱。五毛钱啊?哦,那你
Wu Chang'an's residence here is a stone's throw from Pujen Hexia. Born in this very house in 1506, Wu's most famous fiction is the classic Journey to the West. This great scholar and novelist is the pride and joy of Huai An. Here, you can wander through the living room, which was the main venue for the weddings and funerals of the Wu family, or take a walk through the very garden that inspired this creative tour de force to write this mighty tale. This is where all the action began. I mean, the seed of creative juices just proliferated when Wu Chengen sat in that very study, writing Journey to the West. And as I look around, I just, you know, begin to fill up with a sense of awe because it's in this very spot that this epic classic was being born, and it captured the world's imagination. Now that's food for thought. To understand the man behind this stroke of genius, it's essential to learn about his masterpiece. Wu's classic *Journey to the West* is no monkey business, even though it's steeped in Chinese mythology. We've already been to Wu Chang'an's residences, and to complete this journey of the West experience, we're going to check out the exhibition hall. This adventure story depicts the Tang Dynasty Buddhist monk Xuanzang, or Tripitaka's journey to enlightenment as he heads to India in search of the spiritual text. Accompanied by his three famous disciples or sidekicks, they face 81 dangers or calamities. Here, fiction crosses into the realm of reality to some extent. Apparently, the story is loosely adapted around the real-life adventures of the seventh-century monk Xuanzang. And the folklore and literature surrounding him. Journey to the West has been such an epic success, and it's been translated into many, many different languages around the world. The first version was in the mid 18th century, and that's a Japanese version. And in 1895, the first English version was being translated by Arthur David, and that's the most popular since. And there've been. French, German, Russian, Mongolian—it just goes to show how timeless this classic is. I mean, even till this day, it's so popular in Japan. And you can check out a really cute anime version. I remember when I was a child, I was glued to the TV because this is such a great story. Taking you right to the heart of the adventure. This exhibition hall features 3D film, but goes one step further for a 4D experience. You get blasted with a strong gust of wind when the pilgrims are caught in the mountain, and feel the bubbles when they go underwater. Now that's a sensory overload. Next. We head off to the residence of the first Chinese premier of the People's Republic of China, Zhou Enlai. He led the country between 1949 and 1976. He was born in a room in this old Chinese-style home on March 5, 1898, and lived here till the age of 12. Tragically, his birth mother died when he was only nine, and one year later, his adoptive mother passed away too. This reading room is where Zhou Enlai got his early education from the age of five, and he would sit at this very desk and was largely homeschooled until the age of twelve. Now he studied really hard and showed much promising talent even at a young age. It's hard to imagine that Zhou Enlai used to draw water from this very well, alongside his trusty nanny, and she would live here in this room. You know that tree is about a hundred years old, and it stood as a witness throughout his treasured childhood. Next, 
We head off to a memorial hall that was opened to the public in 1998 to commemorate this great Chinese leader and his wife. Hi, you. Hi. Uh, can you help me find a leader? Can you? Can I introduce you? Oh, great. Good. 这个纪念馆是几时建的？它是一九九二年的元月六号对外开放的。啊，我觉得这地方很棒、啊，它建筑物包括什么呢？呃，它是由我们所在的纪念岛宽阔的水面和环湖四周的绿地组成。啊，总建筑面积啊是四十万平方米，其中百分之七十都是水面。都是水。嗯。它有什么意义吗？这宽阔的水面呢，寓意着周恩来总理博大的胸怀。周恩来总理。十二岁离开家乡以后，为寻求真理操劳国事，再也没有回故乡看上一眼。啊，一一汪涟漪的湖水呢，寄托了家乡人民对他的思念之情。原来如此，那我们可以上去看一下。好啊。Zhou Enlai is revered for his dedication to implementing great policies, and as a tip-top negotiator who exuded charm and poise in public. The people in China loved him dearly for what he stood for, even till this day. People would still come and pay their respects. His political philosophy and personality was such a great inspiration that it even touched the little ones. 小朋友，你们是从哪一个学校来的？那你知道周恩来是谁吗？总理。To understand how Zhou Enlai rose to political success. Visit the Memorial Museum and its large collections of historical photographs. This charismatic globe trotter attended university in Tokyo and later in Paris, which prepared him to become a master at international diplomacy. Henry Kissinger, the 56th United States Secretary of State, called Joe one of the two or three most impressive men he'd ever met. Joe's alma mater. Nan Kai kept some articles written by him. This one in particular is enshrined in an e-book. The circles beside each word means he's got it right, and there are lots of them to prove his stripes. This is from the moon photograph. A photograph of Huai An. In 1906, the Yuan Dynasty. 周恩来总也从上海飞北京，路过淮安上空，驾驶员呢特地啊降低了飞行的高度，好让总理俯视一下淮安的变化。This lion is 600 years old and it's built in the Ming Dynasty. Now, what's even more surprising is that there's a garden over there. And it's located in the middle of the city. Now I think we should follow these kids and check it out. Come on. Qing Yanyuan of the Ming and Qing dynasties is the only imperial garden left along the grain transportation route, and it's now open for public use. Built in 1416, this architectural masterpiece covers eight hectares, and on top of that. Is a picturesque water pavilion that occupies three hectares. Today, weeping willows and natural rock formations frame a quintessential Chinese way of life here, from the traditional art of gardening to various musical activities. This is also the birthplace of some of the best-known dishes of Huayang cuisine. Once a famous kitchen in this garden churned out light and exquisite Huayang delights. We head over to an authentic Huayang restaurant to try out this sumptuous feast. For ladies watching their figures, this is an ultimate guilt-free cuisine packed full of nutrients and fresh ingredients. <laughs> This is Huayan Xie Huang Tang Bao. Hmm, crab roux, steam bun. Here is what we use to make it. Here we use crab roux, steam bun, 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 steam
，是这个呢有个讲究，有几句口诀，您记着啊。一个呢叫先开窗，用这个管子尖的，在中心位置开个窗，先开窗，下面喝喝汤，开始秀。Broadly speaking, there are four main types of Chinese food: Sichuan, Cantonese, Shandong, and Huayang. While Sichuan food fair is known to be hot and spicy, and Cantonese cuisine known for its remarkable dim sum. Huayang cuisine is best loved for being light, fresh, and delicate. It's the peak of hairy crab season, and you can hop on a bus to Hongzhou Lake to catch these delicious palm-sized crustaceans. Hi, I want to go to Hongzhou. How much? Hongzhou is 10 yuan. Okay. It's 9:30. Okay. Hi. 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 Nature took its own course since the 12th century. This lake quadrupled in size since the Yellow River changed its flow. It currently spans some 1,960 square kilometers. But it's what lies beneath the surface that's got us all excited. The hairy crabs of the lake are the piece de resistance that we all crave for. Hi, 你好。我可以过吗？可以可以。好好好。Ooh, it's really tricky. <laughs> there are lots of crabs underneath this boat, so you want to make sure that you're steady on two feet. Now, today, we have some success. Uh, we are going to go to the beach. Okay. We're going to go over there and we're going to catch some crabs. Oh, we're catching now. Now, look at all that crab. 里面哦，里面有多少只啊？里面五五十五十只吧，里面五十只。Yeah. He's totally fearless. He's not afraid of the crabs and their claws. 你不怕他们的？我们一天到晚搞搞这个拿了，怕他拿过来？你有没有被他们咬过？嗯、有过。有过，呜、哦！哇，你看他们，活生生的，把他们煮了算了吧。<笑> Oh, it's unreal! It is unreal. 好，不怕，不怕，不怕。哎呀，这两个大，我们厉害。I am holding on to a hairy crab. Whoa! This is epic. This is nuts. Hey, little fella, he's pretty strong. He's got, he's got quite a grip. 你还要提提点。You're asking a lot. Oh my gosh, I could see his eyes. He's staring right back at me. I'm sorry, but you're going to be on someone's dinner table soon. <laughs> this is fantastic. Oh, look, he's responding. He's pretty strong. I'm not strong, but I'm going to throw him in. Yeah! <laughs> the female crabs are in season in September in the lunar calendar, one month earlier than the males. And that's when you can enjoy the richest taste of crab roe. The art of savoring these yummy crustaceans is by steaming them. The Chinese believe that the crabs carry yin energy, and to balance the act, you can dip it in vinegar and ginger, which are yang energy foods. You yourself cut it, right? Yes, okay. Just like that. First, you untie the knot, and then how do you eat? It's kind of small. You need to remove it first. Ah, look, you use the knot to open. 一挖子就开了，啊，这边是不能吃的，对，把它提下，啊，然后这个用这个蛇，这边这是那个，打开啊，对，打开一下，你试一下，好，啊对
，然后把它的腮部分去掉。它的腮部分。对。那这个是什么汁来的？生姜和醋。啊、哦。白色的就不要吃了，就是它里面有一个硬的地方，你先你尝尝。螃蟹的黄。这真好吃。But even outside of craft season in Huai'an, Huai'an cuisine is a delight all year round. Here in Huai'an, life looks a little like poetry in motion. This city was home to one of the most important political figures in Chinese history and went on to inspire many poets and scholars. Today, it's a perfect place for a dash of culture, Huai'an cuisine, and a taste of life's simpler pleasures. Fire and evokes a sense of wonder, and great men who once lived here were probably nurtured by this very same essence. You know, you can spend days appreciating the history and culture, or come to this, a place where you can totally zen out. And it's good to go back to the basics sometimes and get some life perspective. I'm Greta Georges, and this has been Travel Log.